gift should be telling the same story. <laughs> Don't tell me you're gifted if your behavior is out of whack. Just put your gift on the shelf and make sure you get things straightened out, then you pick it up again. Amen? So then the scripture begin to tell us that these five things, well, actually more than that, dealing with the characteristics of a gift, because I dealt with, first of all, I said that in verse 1 and verse 2, in Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about humility. Humility is the foundation of your gift. Humility is the foundation in two things, hearing from God and doing for God. Say it with me. Hearing from God and doing for God. If humility expresses the character of God, if humility is not present, you would not hear from God properly or do for God properly. Okay, I, I love that one, amen. It was so astounding that it creates so much encouragement that I'm going to give you the opportunity to say amen again. <laughs> Humility is the foundation that expressed the character for God because you cannot hear from God or do for God without a proper perspective of humility. Okay, amen goes right there. All right, so, so, then, so, then, so then understanding this here now, humility expresses the virtue of God as well as his nature. Okay, humility simply means this. That big word simply means this. It simply means to deny oneself to obey God. I remember hearing a sermon years ago that said humility simply means to agree with God. Because not to agree with God can be prideful or rebellion. Okay, disobedient. Okay, arrogant. Y'all getting the picture now? So humility simply means to agree with God where you deny yourself to obey him. Without that being a foundation, everything you say you're doing for God doesn't measure up. Okay? Number two, gentleness or meekness. Uh, it simply means a mild spirit, but here's the real thing. It means power under control. Man. My grandfather was a sharecropper. Okay, and he plowed mules. He didn't have a horse. He plowed mules, okay? And so therefore then, all the power that those two mules had, it was under his control. He would tell it, G, haul, wool, stop. Did they lose power because he had control? Could they still pull the plow? Yes. Could they still run fast? Were they stronger than he was? Yes. It was just that he had a bridle in their mouth, had a harness on them with the reins. I know young folks trying to say, what in the world are you talking about? The bridle of the bit, what they had in their mouth, the reins is a rope, and, 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 and the harness, what they had around their shoulders. But he put a young one with the old one. And the old one would teach the young one. So when the young one wanted to go, the old one would sit. When he said, whoa, the old one would stop. Finally, the young one got the picture. It simply meant here power under control. With the believer, he's simply saying here, with all of your areas of anointing, all of your giftedness, all the authority of God has given you, and you got power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy, well, does he have control of you? Because if he doesn't, that means then you are not under control, you're out of control, and therefore you're a renegade. So then the authority God has given you, along with your gift, is to be under God's authority, under the control and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Patience simply means, this is a good one, this is a good one. If I had to pick out, I don't mean to have a favorite, uh, but if I had to pick out one, this is one that is very needful. Patience or long suffering means, here it is, the ability of the Holy Spirit within your recreated human spirit that you stay the course. You stay the course in the midst of opposition without losing your confidence, your praise, amen, your expectations, your joy. Your trust, 
and your faith in a word from God. Now, I word, now the Lord had me to word that a little bit different. I didn't say lose your faith in the word of God. I said your faith in a word from God. Because God will give you a word in the midst of your dilemma. <laughs> I'm trying to contain myself right now, okay? God will give you a word in the midst of your dilemma. And that word he gives you become the answer to your dilemma. So the enemy wants to move you off of that word. He don't want you to stay the course on that word. So whatever you're dealing with something or going through something, you get a word from God. Lord Jesus. This, this, Lord, you need to hear this. You get a word from Lord have mercy here. You get a word from God. And so then, so then you don't let the enemy move you from that word because the word that he has just given you, you don't lose your expectation. If God says he's going to bring you out, he's going to bring you out. Well, well, preacher, give me a case in point. God promised Abraham a son. It took 25 years for him to get here. He had to walk it out and not lose, watch this, not lose his expectation, not lose his joy, not lose his patience, not lose his praise, not lose his faith. So whenever God gives you a word in the midst of your dilemma, don't let the enemy move, that, move you from that word. I don't know if I need to say that for a minute. You feel an urging in your spirit? Yeah. Because we have to understand, you see, in the midst of your dilemma, there's a word from God. And any time the enemy can get you to move from that word from God, you, you fall into a defeated area. See, see, I, I don't want you to say, uh, 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 don't lose faith in the word of God. No, I'm dealing with you personally because you may be going through something different than I am. I need a particular word because of my particular situation. And God give a word based on my particular situation. And then he says, stay the course. Stay the course. Don't go to the left. Lord have mercy. Don't go to the right. Don't bag up. Stay the course. Because as you stay the course, that word will manifest itself on your behalf. But see, if you got too many voices in your ear, you get confused. What seemed right to someone else don't mean it's right for you. Lord Jesus, help me here. So that it means then, it means then, it's the ability of the Holy Spirit within my recreated human spirit that I stay the course with my expectations, with my faith. Don't lose my joy. Don't lose my praise because of that word. See, and when God gives you that word, it's that word you can voice back to the devil. No, no, no. I messed up one time when I got with Hagar. I'm not doing it anymore. I got that word now. I got that word. Yeah, yeah, I drifted off, but I came back because you gave me. So, 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 dinner, 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 dinner with Noah. It's going to rain. Okay, Lord, I got that word. That word propped me into action that it take me over 100 years to build an ark. See, we would have given up because we hadn't saw no rain, no nothing. You talking about 120 years, brother, on a word. And you're building an ark and getting instruction from God to build this ark. And it's 120 years on a word? Wait a minute, brother. You mean to tell me you got up every morning preparing and building and hammering and, and, and everything else and gathering animals off of a word? And it's been 120 years ago? Well, brother, it was a word from God. And that word was so convincing to me. That word was so impressive upon me because I understood who gave it. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We talked about forbearing love, forbearing love. It simply means, listen here, it simply means to protect or to cover, to back up under. It expresses patience in adverse situation. It means that I don't, I don't, I don't hastily retaliate or, or, or want to punish. But it's the opposite of 
anger, but I extend mercy. Love provides, here's the key, forbearing love simply means love provides a blanket for, but not an excuse for. Love covers a multitude of sin, but it doesn't make excuses for sin. I want to understand this now. So then when, when forbearing is intact, you don't, you don't create a sounding board to tell everybody everything. Forbearing love means I tell you and not your friend. I tell you and not your homie. I talk to you directly and that love covers, but it don't make an excuse for it. So as you witness to someone in this, in this, in this, in this community of the, of, the, of, the, of the church, which means in iron sharpens iron, we sharpen the counters of each other because sometimes people can see things you don't see. So when they express it to you, if it don't fit, put it on the shelf because if it's God, he'll bring it back. He will bring it back. So, so, so if they would give you words of wisdom, don't get upset. No, 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 no. Wives, husbands, butcher, baker, candlestick makers. Don't get upset. They simply notice something that they're trying to cover. Because they notice that maturity needs to take place there. Are we ready here? Because I'm not making an excuse for. Oh, God. Because the ministry of reconciliation, I'm pulling you, I'm covering you so the Holy Ghost can get to you. Oh, Jesus. Because if I uncover you, I expose and make it open for the enemy. For bearing love, it simply means that I cover you. I bring a blanket of love. And I wrap it over you until you mature. It's not an excuse for bad behavior. It's a covering for maturity. Now, we're dealing with the characteristics. Now, the characteristics, the characteristics, characteristics. Uh, uh, and last week, I talked about endeavoring. Endeavoring to keep the peace it simply means that we strive for, we earnestly, we guard to keep the unity of oneness in the bonds of peace. It, it's... it's it, Understanding here, without all the other intact, without humility, gentleness, patience, forbearing love, endeavoring, there could be no unity. Amen? So that's your review. Praise the Lord. I want to deal with today that, that in verses 4, in Ephesians chapter 4, in verses 4, it says, that, Be eager, strive earnestly to guard to keep the peace. That's verse 3. Verse 4 says that, Notice that there are seven ones that he began to deal with to create the unity. In Ephesians chapter 4, we begin with verse 4 from the Amplified Version. It says this, one, five, one God, where verse 5, so let me go back to verse 5. Okay, we're going to go back to verse 4. One body, one spirit, one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. He lists seven ones, and he's preaching to the church. Remember, he starts chapter 4 with the word, therefore, which I had to go back to chapter 1, 2, and 3 to see what it's there for. First three deal with doctrinal behavior. The second three deal with application. So if the body is going to walk in unity and in agreement and worth of its call, I need those things that I've been covering. And now he want to bring a, a, a summation to those things here by saying, listen to the ones. If I understand the ones, I understand the agreement and the power that exists in the church. The enemy wants to separate the Holy Spirit saying one. The enemy wants to divide. The Holy Spirit says Unity. So then the city that sits on a hill is a city that walked worth of its vocation with such the characteristics in the unity and the oneness that it draws people to it. Because of the behavior in the city, 
and invite others to be a part of the city. Because our Father is so good in the city. Make the laws and say, I want to be a part of that city. I don't see the Father, but I see how well the citizens are taken care of. <laughs> because I see the welfare of the citizens, well, I may be in the wrong place. I need to go to that city. So let's walk through this oneness for a moment here because he says something here that is so important. Listen, everything that relates to salvation, the church and the kingdom of God, is based on the concept of unity. Never division, unity. The manifestation of the outward unity is based upon the identity of inward unity with Christ first. This is not a social club. That we agree on, a, on bylaws, we agree on this standard. No, no, no. This is done by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He didn't tell us to develop unity. He said, endeavor to keep it. Because you can't create this depth of unity. This depth of unity is deposited in us at the new birth. Solidified by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can't be filled with the Spirit and operate in disunity and feel comfortable. It just won't work. It will not work. So the focus on the oneness is built upon God's nature, God's plan, the working of the Holy Spirit. As we commit ourselves to live in obedience to the one lordship of Christ. That's how it's developed as we yield. So let's walk through a couple of them this morning. Amen. He said one body. There's one body of believers, the church, who compose of every born-again person who trusts in Christ as Savior and Lord. Listen, listen. Listen. One body. In Romans chapter 12, verse 4, Amplified Version says this, For as one physical body, we have many parts, organs, and members, and all these parts do not have the same function or use. Now, let's, let's, let's deal with something up front. The name above the door matters zero to God. <laughs> to brag about your denomination creates a vision, and you miss the oneness. When you brag about your denomination, you're putting down another. Are we making ourselves clear here? There's one body. And to get into that body, you have to be born again. There's not a white body, black body, yellow body, red body, what other pigmentation body is one. The enemy, it's amazing that we allow the enemy to use the color of your house as division. You ever see a brick house arguing with a stucco? How about stucco arguing with vinyl siding? How about vinyl siding arguing with a log cabin? We don't see that. So I want to understand that the enemy focus is to bring division, and he will start with the color of your house, which I mean your body. That's the strategy. He don't want the oneness. Dr. Edwin Cole says the place of agreement is the place of power. So to break the power, I divide the body. When the body recognized that there's only one body, Lord have mercy, that means that whether you're over here or over there, there's somebody I could get in agreement with. Because if one could put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand to flight, and we change our city. There's one body, one, one, one body. Listen, brother, you may not believe the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, we'll pray for you. I do. Don't get distracted 
because they want to magnify a name above a principle, above truth. One church, one body, many parts, many operations, many functions, one body. Take your physical body for a moment. How all of it is necessary. If every part of the body was an eye, where would the walking be? If every part was a foot, where would the hearing be? If, if, if every part was the hearing, where would the speaking be? It's still one body. And have you noticed that your body don't go anywhere without his head? I call your head as being led by your inward spirit. Your recreated human spirit, been empowered by the Holy Spirit, give directions to the body. Your body expresses who your Lord is. Your body, you don't have to tell me, just watch the behavior of your body. Your body will reveal it. So he starts out by saying there is one body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Amplified. Do you not discern it and understand that you, the whole body, the church at Corinth, are God's temple, his sanctuary, and that God's spirit has his permanent dwelling place in you, to be at home in you, collectively as a church and individually? See, see, the Holy Spirit within the governs you. The Holy Spirit upon is works of ministry. We'll say it again. The Holy Spirit within governs you. The Holy Spirit upon is works of ministry. So when Jesus tells them, breathe on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost, that's for them. Acts 2, it came on them. That meant works of ministry. In Luke 9 and Luke 10, Jesus gave them power and authority. Yeah. That was to do a work. Yeah. We will get there in a minute. So there are times that the fact, I want us to understand that the body is one, that the Holy Spirit within can bring us in agreement. The Holy Spirit upon helps us to function. So we need both to achieve the full unity that God is calling for. Because I'm unity at the new birth, but I hadn't matured. But the Holy Ghost upon, I can do works of exploits. So you need the Holy Spirit on you when you go into a dark territory. And when you get there, you bring the light of God as well as the power of God, as well as the manifestation of God, because now you and God is one. Well, let me show you how powerful this oneness is. See, when you were born of God, that means you have access to his arena. Your natural unborn spirit can't get you that high. When you're born again, you move into a God class. You can view things from his perspective. He has exalted you. Ephesians 2, 6 says that we are seated with him in heavenly places. He's talking to the church, not to the world. One, Ephesians 1, 3 says you've been blessed with all the spiritual blessings in Christ. He's talking to the church and not to the world. So then my new birth put me in God class. He empowered me with the Holy Spirit. I'm one with God to walk out the oneness in the body of Christ. So, so this one God, no, we get to that in a minute. But yeah, 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 Lord, okay, okay, Lord. This one body, this one body, this one body is important, is important. Then he says it's one spirit, one spirit. Every believer has been given the same Holy Spirit as a down payment of your inheritance. <sighs> See, help me, Lord. This one spirit creates a deposit in you of what capacity you have access to. 
I'll talk to this side. This one spirit deposit in you awaken you to your true identity. Okay, I need to talk to somebody else. See, this one spirit, see, God didn't give you another spirit because he had nowhere else to get it from. So he gave you himself. That's why 1 John 4 and 4 says, greater is he that is in than he that is in the See, don't get around and ask God for more power, and he asks you where he's going to get it from because if you got him, you got all of it. Remember now, when Jesus was raised from the dead, it says all power was given unto him. Oh, Jesus. So if he has all power, that means somebody don't have any. He has it all. And he went, since he has it all, he gives it to the church. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So all the power is right now inside you. But if you don't know it, you can't activate it. And the enemy want to keep you ignorant of who you are. One body. One spirit. Romans 8 11 says the same spirit. Not another spirit. The same, oh Jesus, the same spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead indwells you. And that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. You can't stay sick when the Holy Ghost on the inside. You can't stay in poverty with the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. That same spirit that wakened Jesus' body up from hell itself and resurrected back through the grave indwells you. There's one spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. There's one Holy Spirit. There's one Holy Ghost. It is a ghost is. And when I say this, not to frighten you, but to exalt you. Well, we'll use a proper vernacular that you don't be so afraid of. There's one Holy Spirit. <laughs> that created your new birth and also empower you for works of ministry. What does he empower? The gift he placed on the inside of you. He said, I would not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. Me and the Father will make our abode upon you. Because what's inside you is so precious that you need the power of the Holy Spirit to bring it out. Don't let the enemy put it out. Let the Holy Ghost bring it out. He wants to empower you. Every born again believer, you are more than a conqueror whether you realize it or not. So he says here, one body. He says, one spirit. He says, one hope of your calling. This is a call declaring that we must finish well. <laughs> Be thou faithful until death. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, and Jesus talking about the talents, it says this right here. His master said to him, well done, thou upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into, enter into and share the joy, the delight, and the blessedness that your master enjoys. Whatever God has given you is to multiply, to impact territory. It don't become a bragging moment of what's in you. What's in you is of no use unless you're making a difference in others. You see what I mean? So that he's saying here, when I deposit in you, he wants you to finish well. You can't finish well if you're not doing. 
You can't finish well if it's not impacting. You can't finish well if it's not making a difference. You can't finish well if it's not growing out of you. Every person wants to hear God say, good, was it, how good it is, how well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, you're not going to hear that if you're not doing and not being a servant. Because he's going to say, men in that day, have I prophesied in your name? He's going to say, I know you're not, you workers of iniquity. Why? It came from a wrong place. God didn't birth it. If God didn't birth it, that means the devil did. God's principle doesn't change. There is one body. There's one spirit. There's one hope of your calling. Then he says, this is where I want to end up with today. He said, there's one Lord. One Lord. One Lord. I believe he wants us to understand that in the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned as well, created the heavens and the earth. One Lord. Lord also carries the meaning of owner. We like Savior, but we don't like Lord. Lord, save me, but leave me to myself. We don't like the Lord with the Savior. We like the Savior for deliverance. We don't like the Lord on the authority. Land Lord. You just a tenant, but you don't own. The scripture says you were bought with the price of his shed blood. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. You don't own you. Psalms 24 and verse 1 says, the earth is the Lord, and the food is thereof, and then it says, all they that dwell therein, for he founded it and he established it. So when he did it with this one Lord, he also means this, you don't have to look to another to fulfill what he's called you to do. <laughs> The longing that is inside you came from the one Lord, and the one Lord is the only one that enabled you to fulfill what he put inside you. In my younger days, I tried to fill it up with everything else. You want to fill it up with going out. You want to fill it up with sports. You want to fill it up with this. You want to fill it up with that. And at the end of the day, you're still empty because you hadn't went to the right source to fill that void. So if God created the void, who can fill the void? And every man and every individual, there's a longing to fellowship with the Lord. And when I don't understand that, I put other things in that spot and it leaves me empty. The last time I went to the club, Studio West, if you might, you probably remember that. I got, I, 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 I rededicate my life back to the Lord that Sunday. I, I, I said, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm in it, Lord. I went to Wednesday night Bible study. Thursday night were calling me. Because Thursday night was ladies' night. <laughs> Thursday night was calling me. I survived it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, whew, I made it past the Friday night, <laughs> calling me, and it wouldn't stop calling. And we had Bible study on Friday night, so Friday night calling me. I pull up and I, I pull up to park at Studio West, and I got out of the car, and the Holy Spirit says, "What are you here for?" Because I was trying to fill that void with something else. I got back in the car and went to church. Your largest hurdle is after your greatest commitment. When you make a commitment to stop, it's when the largest hurdle comes. Lord, I'm not going to drink anymore. All you're drinking, but it's called. 
Yes. No, I'm not going to party no more. All your party buddies call <laughs> with an invitation. You say, you're going to stop doing this. Then, then, then the best thing since sliced bread start looking at you and say, where are you at? <laughs> the greatest battle and struggle is after that greatest commitment. And when you overcome that commitment, you sense the power of God begin to strengthen you and begin to empower you that when you stand up against that first one, the rest become easier. Because God is trying to take us somewhere. He's looking for us. Who is going to stand? I had to make a decision. Who is going to be my Lord? And here it is. You yield his lordship on purpose. God's not going to make you. He's not going to force you. He's waiting on your amen before his Holy Spirit will strengthen you. Lord, 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 don't let them ask me. They're going to ask. They're going to ask. Lord, I hope they don't come. Just sure as you finish sin, they're knocking. Yes, but I have to make a decision. I have one Lord, and his name is Jesus. <laughs> that had given me his word and the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen me through every challenge. Don't be afraid to share who your Lord is, because sharing your Lord is just like sharing your love. The more you say it, the more it grows. The more you share it, the more it grows. The more you express it, the more it will increase. And husband and wives, don't be like this old man says. His wife said, do you love me? He said, I said it one time. If I change my mind, I'll tell you. <laughs> that don't work. That don't work. That don't work. Husband, tell your wives. Wives, tell your Husbands and husband, wife, tell your children how much you love them. Okay, love is not built on what it could get. Love is based on the giving. So tell them, sweetheart, I love you. Baby, I love you. I appreciate you. I value you. I thank God for you. Okay. Well, well, let's do let's 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 do it. If you sit next to your wife right now, put your arm around her. Put your arm around your wife. If you sit next, uh, uh, get on down to next to your wife, man. <laughs> Tell the daughter to slide over. Say, say, move. Get out the way. Get no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you see how much that I bet she feel good right now. You don't, you're going to notice that your dinner is going to taste better. <laughs> Amen. 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 And I don't mean buying it now. I don't mean buying it. I don't mean buying it. It expresses itself. God is saying here, if I'm your Lord, he says again, we did with Father, let me love you. You didn't get that. Don't pull someone else to give you love that is not authentic. Let me be your Lord and let me love you. Let me love you. I bet she's melting like butter right now. <laughs> Even if you're there by yourself, just do like this right here. Just do this right here. If you're here by yourself, do this, yeah. And he's saying the same thing. Let me love you. Let me love you. Because being Lord means I want the best for you. And you don't have to look to another for any provisions. Let me love you. 
Let me. You get that? Love you. Drive all the other imitations out of the way. It let me walk in as being Lord. It let me love you. Let me love you. He deal with these things here. We'll finish up later on. Because he want the church that sit on a hill to have such a light and such an aura and such an aroma that when you walk by it, that sweet smelling of agreement, of unity, of being gentle and kind and humble and patience and forbearing draws others into that city. And here's the thing. And when they get here, and when they get here, you don't have a right to bring up their past. Because they're part of the body. You don't have a right to tell them they don't belong. Because they're not like you. You don't have the right to tell them they're not needful. But it's your responsibility to embrace. Because at one time, that person was you. <laughs> this place is so full of love right now. That if you are not, you haven't been born again. I didn't say go to church. You have not been born again with every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You have not accepted Jesus. Right now, I want you to raise your hands wherever you are right now. Just raise your hands. We want to pray for you. Wherever you are, just raise your hand. If you have not received Jesus, just raise, just hold up your hand because I want to see your hand. Hold up your hand. You have not received Jesus. Just raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. You may be here and you're saying that, Pastor, I need to rededicate myself back to the Lord. I've drifted. I've wandered. I've, I've been out there, whatever the case may be. And you're saying that I want to rededicate my life back to the Lord. I want you to raise your hand. Doesn't matter who you are, what you've been going through, just raise your hands because we want to love you. And we want to pray for you. Here's that one right now. We want to love you. Pray for you. We want to be there for you. If you're going through something right now, are you saying that I need prayer with or about right now? If you're going through something right now and you want prayer, I want you to raise your hand. Hold your hand up. I need a sister, Sister Martha, right there in front of you. Right there, stand with. I need a, I need a, Sister Ray, yeah, I need a brother and a sister over here. A brother or a sister right back here. You with us, Sister Smith? Okay. I need a brother right here. Raise it. Keep your hand up right, real quick. Brother Mario, hold your hand up. Got someone standing coming for you. I got a sister right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Sister Pam. Oh, you stand with her, Sister Martha. Okay. Got with her. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Right here. Right here. I have a sister right here with a hand up. Uh, what's another sister I got? I need another sister, sister Diane. Sister Diane, go stand with her right there. Just, so you will just stand there in agreement. Is there another hand up? If you if you want prayer, you're dealing with some things. You want prayer? My brother right here in the blue right here got his hand up right there in front of you, brother Vaughn. Right there. I think sit beside brother Duncan. Is that behind you, brother Duncan? Yeah, right there. Someone else. If you want prayer right now. Listen, why is this important? We don't want you to go to anything by yourself. We want to touch and agree with you to see the Holy Spirit do some work in your life. There's a spirit of restoration that is taking place right now. God is wooing you. He's pulling you back to himself. Someone else, if you're going through something right now, just raise your hand. We want somebody beside you to touch and agree with you, to, to lay hands on you and pray. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else right now before we pray? Anyone else right now? You want someone to stand with you while we pray? Just raise your hands right now. I want you to stand with someone while we pray. Hallelujah. Uh, Chase, Chase, I want you to stand with Jalen right now. He had surgery. And we're standing with him. You bring him with you? Stand behind Jalen right now. He's right here. He's right here. He moved up. Amen. He's right here. He's right here. He's right here. Hallelujah. You join in with him, Brandon, and stand behind him. Just, just surround him right now. In the name of Jesus. There's an anointing right now. There's an anointing right now. Earl, stand with them. Stand with them. Stand with them. God is strengthening you in your obedience right now. In Jesus' name. Now, I, I tell you what I need. I tell you what I need. I may ask someone to. Uh, uh, Sister Palmer and Sister Lowry, stand with Jalen's mother right now. Just stand behind her. That's Jalen's mother right now. Yes, stand behind him right now. Stand behind Jalen's mother right now. Amen. Amen. There's an anointing that is moving, that is prevalent right now in the name of Jesus. You stand behind your family. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's your family. That's your family. You lay hands on your wife and your girls. Amen. Have her to move closer. You lay your hands on your wife and your girls right now. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. You, you hugging April? Thank you. Woo, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is that Corey that I see? Corey? Lay your hands on the brother right there in front of you. Right there in front of you. And David, lay hands on your nephew right there. Y'all intercede for him right now. Ah, oh, glory. Y'all sense the power of God. The place of agreement is the place of power. In Jesus' name. We bring ourselves in agreement with you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. You're doing a work that is beyond our expectation, beyond our comprehension, Lord. You go to the depth that we cannot reach, but you can reach it because you already know. So, Holy Spirit, we come in agreement with you for a move of God. You're restoring right now. You are strengthening right now. You're elevating right now. Dear God, you're blessing right now. You are setting free at this moment, God. You're closing up doors, Father. You're opening up doors, God. You're blessing with might in an innermost being, Lord. You open up opportunities, Father. You're bringing peace beyond understanding, God. You're renewing our strength right now in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, whatever it is that we're standing with, we combine our faith together right now for breakthrough, for restoration, reassurance, God, re-establishing all over again in the name of Jesus. Ah, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, glory, 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 glory. We lift up Bishop right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus' name, God. You're doing a work right now, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, in Jesus' name, Father. You're blessing, God. Every yoke has been broken and destroyed in Jesus' name. You have set the captive free in Jesus' name. Lord, we walk in unity right now. We walk in freedom right now. We walk in agreement right now. Every chain has been destroyed. In Jesus' name, we pray for every student in finals, God. 
Oh God, you're anointing. You're anointing your blessing. We yield to your Lordship. We yield to your Lordship. We yield to your Lordship. We yield to the anointing God. And we give you glory. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name.